Today I'm going to show you some really cool science experiments using water. For the first one we're going to use one of these plastic pipettes. They're typically used for dispensing small amounts of liquid. But we're going to be using it in a slightly different way. Next take a metal nut and thread it over the pipette tube until it seats against the bulb at the top like this. Then cut the tube just below with some scissors. Next I'm using a glue gun to hold the nut firmly in place. Leave the glue to set. Once it's dried we need to make sure it floats in water. So I tried it out in a glass. And sadly it didn't. So I fished it back out, pulled the nut off and the glue, dried it off and fitted on a smaller nut. I cut the pipe down again and you can see I had to squeeze the tube to fit it inside the smaller nut. I held it on with some glue again and left it to dry. This time when I tested it out it floats perfectly. And you can see it just bobbing up and down. Getting the weight just right is a bit of trial and error. Next we need to take a clear plastic bottle, remove the label and fill it with water. Drop in your pipette and screw the lid back on. Now watch what happens when you squeeze the bottle. It sinks to the bottom. Release the bottle and it floats back up. We've made our own Cartesian diver. Inside the pipette bulb is a bubble of air and when you squeeze the sides of the bottle you increase the pressure inside which compresses the air inside the pipette bulb. This makes it increase in density and the increase in the air density combined with the density of the bulb and the metal nut is now greater than the density of the water around it so it sinks. When we stop squeezing the bottle we release the pressure which allows the air bubble to expand back to its original size and the whole thing floats again. You've got to love science. If you haven't got a pipette you can make your own diver out of a drinking straw. Cut it in half and fold it over on itself like this. We're going to use a paper clip for a weight. I slid the ends up into the straw like this. Drop it into a glass of water to make sure it floats. Then add it into the bottle. I gave the bottle a squeeze and the original one drops down easily but the paperclip one takes a huge amount of pressure to make it sink. I think it's a bit too buoyant. So I opened the lid back up and squeezed the bottle a bit to bring the water level to the top so I could retrieve it. I removed the paper clip and cut down the straw length a bit to reduce the amount of air it holds. I put it back together, made sure it floated in the glass and dropped it back into the bottle. Now when I squeeze the bottle it sinks a lot easier. It's made a big difference.
I'm going to make one final diver out of this blue straw, which I cut in half as well. This time I'm using some plasticine to coat the straw, and I'm actually making a diver figure. I gave it some arms, and a helmet. Then I used some yellow plasticine to make some flippers. Remembering to leave the straw holes unblocked. And finally I gave him an air tank on his back. I tested it out to see if it would float. And no, it was far too heavy. Even with removing the oxygen tank and the arms, it was still too heavy. So I made a more lightweight version. And he's even got a visor on his helmet. And the main thing is, it actually floats. The next test is to try and get him into the bottle opening. Then put the lid back on, and try it out. And yeah, it works really well. A bit more sluggish than the other two. But it does sink and come back up perfectly, so I'm really pleased about that. It's interesting because they're all made differently, they have different volumes of air and different densities, they all behave differently. They have different characteristics. Putting them up against this dark background really helps them stand out. Next I'm going to show you how to do a really cool trick. Fill a small bottle about three quarters full with some water. Put your fingers over the end. Then turn the bottle upside down and carefully remove your fingers. The water should stay inside the bottle. Next take something that floats. I'm using a matchstick. Push it up into the bottle and watch it float to the top. Pretty cool, huh? Next thing I'm using is a little wooden bead. And yep, you can see that float too. It's amazing just adding things to the bottom and watching them float up to the top. And there it goes. You can just keep adding more and watch as they rise to the surface. It'll amaze anyone watching. It seems to really defy logic. When you're done, you can just give the bottle a shake and watch it all run out. It's a really cool trick 
And that's exactly what it is. Let me show you how I did it. To start with, remove the bottle top and the plastic ring underneath. Then pour the water in the bottle. Next we need to take a small amount of cling film, put it over the bottle like this and hold it in place with the plastic ring. Then use some scissors to cut the excess cling film off Make it as neat as possible. Then poke a small hole through the centre of the cling film, like this. And that's all there is to it. You can now turn the bottle upside down. And there's enough surface tension in the water to stop it running through the hole and you can poke things up through into the water until they float. It really is such a cool trick. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, if you want to see more you can click on the links or take a look at my YouTube channel page. Stay safe, have fun and as always, thanks for watching.